Well, praise God, we are just excited this morning to be Zooming and just, just celebrating uh, another Sunday, the first day of the week. And then this particular day happens to be Father's Day. And so we just want to say this here, you know what I mean? Uh, although we can recognize fathers around the world and just, you know, wish them a happy Father's Day and acknowledge, you know what I mean, their fatherhood, we cannot forget to acknowledge the fatherhood of God. Yahweh Elohim, the Father. The Father God is the reason why Jesus came. The Father God is the reason why the Holy Spirit is here. It is the Father God, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in unison, they came together to make things better for mankind. And we thank God that we are now the recipients and learning more about Jesus, learning more about the Father, learning more about the Holy Spirit. You know, when we look at the Godhead, when we look at Elohim from the Old Testament, in the New Testament, we see them working uh, distinctly. But we see them fulfilling the plan for mankind's redemption. It's an amazing story. And I mean, I mean, when you look at the Bible, it's like, whoa, this, this is happening. It is real. And it's like when you allow yourself to really embrace what God is doing, when you allow yourself to just say, okay, you know what, God, you are the creator. We are the created. God, you know what you're doing. Reveal to us your plan. And so the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit begins to, through the Bible, because that's the only way that we can really, really contact God in a intellectual, in a, a cerebral way, then from the acceptance of what we read in the scriptures, the instructions, the directions, the, the very nature of God, then we can make a choice. We can choose to, to trust God and say to God, God, I want to know you better. Or Father God, I want to know you better. The minute you and I make that choice in our heart, that decision with our mind, then the Father God says, Jesus, all right, Jesus is the only way that we can understand the Father, understand the heart of the Father God. That's the only way that we can understand literally the purpose and the plan of Elohim, God, for our lives. So when we now master Jesus's life, and that's why we're in the book of Luke, looking at the life, the ministry, and the, and the very purpose of Jesus Christ, we look at Jesus to understand God the Father, to understand deity, to understand what is divine. Now, it's the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus, we, 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 oh, we got mad love for Jesus because he paid the price. He had to endure the physical torture and sacrifice for our freedom. Now, the Holy Spirit, okay, wow. Now, God, the Holy Spirit, all right, nothing happens without the Holy Spirit. See, the Father lays out the plan. Jesus speaks the plan of the Father, the Holy Spirit brings it to reality. So like right now, you know, the Father said, okay, we're going to create man. Jesus is like, great. He speaks the word. It, the Holy Spirit goes into action, creates the word. They're, they're one in unity, but they're individual members of the triune Godhead, Elohim, is God in the plurals. So, you know, we don't have time to get into all of that. But if you start studying the Hebrew, understanding the meaning of these words, like in the beginning when the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. When you begin to break down each one of those words, that's where you get truth. Then you don't have to interpret. Now you get understanding. When I study the word, I break down every word that's, that's relevant to the context of the passage. And then I define that word in the definition, the meaning of the word is the meaning of the point God is trying to make to us. So when we look at the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Elohim, when we look at God operating as a unit, kind of like our military, we have the Air Force, we have the Navy, and then we have the Army. One, one operates in the air, one dominates on the ground, one dominates in water. They're different branches of our military, but they are the U.S. military. They are what causes us to be the number one world power in military might. 
So when we look at God, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that's working within us now. The Holy Spirit is the one teaching us the ways of God. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals to us the plans of God. And then when we pray and ask God to do something, it is the Holy Spirit that will show us how to operate the process and how to put in the right ingredients of the formula to bring about the outcome that God has promised. When you have a promise of God, when I have a promise from God, when we go to the Bible and we pull out a promise that God says, I will do this for you, the next thing that should be in our mind is, God, what's the, what's the formula and what's the process? You need to know the process so you know how long it is. You need to know the formula so you can make sure that you are in imparting into that process the thing that'll move you swiftly to the outcome. So when we look at Jesus's life, we look at the power of the, the Father, the power of the Lord Jesus fulfilling the words of the Father, and then the Holy Spirit revealing to us, helping us understand why God is doing what he's doing, what God is doing, how God is doing it, and then giving us clarity so that we don't accuse or blame or think that what the devil is doing it's God doing. So we have to have some clarity. We need some revelation knowledge. We need some deeper understanding. And no better way to understand God moving in your life than looking at the life of Jesus. And that's why we're in the book of Luke. And we're going through this verse by verse. So we're gonna let we're gonna let the chapter determine the flow. We're gonna allow the chapter to determine where we go. Literally, we're gonna allow God's life, Jesus' life on the earth. We're gonna look at it. And we're going to see everything that he dealt with to the best of our ability. And that's why it's taking so long to get through these chapters. But it is going to be one of the most rewarding and meaningful things. So stay focused. you got to be really, really, really focused. you got to think. you got to, you got to, you got to pull this stuff apart. And then you got to find those promises. you got to find those places where you can say, I got truth. And I got a means and a method to trust God. Yeah, those that keep, that you keep studying the word and you put your faith and trust in God and you begin to do what God says do and you start seeing results, you start seeing things take place, all of a sudden you get very, very confident in God, you get very, very confident in yourself and you get very, very confident in what you're, what you're doing in life because you now have tied everything that you're doing to the purpose of God. And when you tie things to the purpose of God, now you got the power of God to pull on. You got the, the ability of God to pull on. You have now the, the inspiration of God, the motivation from God. That's a recipe for victory, success, winning in the name of Jesus. And so when we look at Jesus's life, he went through a lot of stuff. He dealt with a lot of obstacles. He dealt with a lot of conflict but he overcame it all. And that's exactly what God is teaching you and I through looking at the life of Jesus. He's teaching us how to overcome in any scenario, in any situation, in any circumstance. And the victory has been given to us through the blood of Jesus. That's a spiritual reality. We want now that victory that we have through salvation to begin to manifest and work itself out in every endeavor of life. When we can tie all of our endeavors in life back to giving God glory, that thing is guaranteed successful. It's gonna be a success. It's process, formula, outcome. Anything that you put your hands to do, you do it for the glory of God. You tell God, God, I'll do this for your glory and for your honor. And everything and everybody and, 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 and every situation that gets touched by what I'm doing, God, I'm going to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. I'm telling you right now, the power of God, the kingdom of God will go to your aid. The, the, the Holy Spirit will begin to show you all of the tactics and the strategies to bring you to the swiftest, the most permanent and sustainable victory and success that you've ever experienced in your life. Now, you ready to get into the word? Because we got some stuff to break down. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the rip, okay? This passage that we are about to break down is a difficult passage. I've been wrestling with this thing. I've been like, okay, God, okay, I see what tradition says and I see what, you know, everybody's saying, but there's got to be more from a practical standpoint, from an applicable standpoint that, that we're missing. And if I'm missing it, show it to me. I think he showed me some things this morning and he's going to show us some things. And you know, here's what's wonderful about preaching. When you allow the Holy Spirit to interrupt your sermon, you can get fresh revelation. You're going to fresh knowledge and fresh, you know what I mean, insight from God. That's what makes 
telling people about God, sharing with people about God, and, 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 and encouraging people to get closer to God, that's what makes this so amazing, okay? Because when you get caught up in this flow, you get caught up in this flow, this is where the life of God begins to just move and begins to regenerate and restore and, and, and revive and resurrect. Yeah, I'm telling you, we stand up again and we come stronger the next time. So, all right, um, we left off the last time, okay? The, the Pharisees, they at Jesus again. Now they, they jumping at the disciples and Jesus got to step in and, and this thing about fasting. And he, they was like, well, how come, how come John the Baptist disciples fast and the Pharisees disciples and apprentices, they fast and your disciples, they don't fast. They eating and drinking and being merry. Jesus said, hey, okay, I'm with them, okay? You can't expect them to fast when I'm with them. I got them. But when I go back to heaven, send the Holy Spirit, during those days when they carrying out the assignment that I've given to them, oh, they will fast and they will pray at that time. But it ain't that time right now. This is what I love about Jesus in this passage. And we're talking about uh, verse 35 in chapter 5. You know, Jesus stepped up and was like, Hold on, Satan, you're not going to use your kids to beat down and, and, and slander my kids without me saying something about it. And what that tells me is this here. You know, you deal with all kinds of difficult people. You deal with all kinds of difficult situations. We're dealing with a difficult situation now. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about the pandemic right now. I'm talking about this systemic racism. This is a problem. And, and, and not just racism, white on black, Asian on black, uh, uh, whatever on black. It, black on white, black on Asian, racism, no matter what the tools are that are being used to express Satan's heart, to express Satan's desire, it doesn't matter what people groups he's using, where it's coming, because racism is seen in every area. But you know, right now, we, the people of God, we're rising up and we're putting the answer. We're understanding the mindset behind racism. We're understanding the, the, the satanic attack on people's minds, and we're taking the word of God, and we're going to set them free. But it's not going to happen unless you can see the formulas that Jesus used dealing with the Pharisees, the scribes, the haters of his day. And when we can take those principles and then apply those principles in our own circumstances and scenarios, they will work because they come from God. But we just got to trust them. And then we got to know how to put it out there. And if we put it out there right, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get the same results that Jesus got. Now, let's read. So watch this. This is going to get really, really, really powerful. Okay? So we, we, we're dealing with how Jesus dealt with his haters, how he dealt with those difficult people sent into his life to try to derail and destroy his ministry. So, you know, when we look at how Jesus handled things in principle, what his strategy and his technique was, when we apply that technique, we're going to get the same results. You know what I mean? So now, so he stands up for the disciples. He, he answers the Pharisees. He shuts them down. They ain't had nothing to say. They ain't talking about fasting no more after Jesus' conversation. And I'm telling you right now, whatever the devil is using people to do to bring conflict in your life, in our lives, what we need to do is find out how Jesus handled conflict against him personally and take that same strategy, put it on these folks that's coming against you. I don't care what it is, racism, greed, jealousy, hatred, envy. But if we learn how God handles these things, then we can utilize those same tactics, and those same techniques, and God will fight for us through us utilizing God's word, Elohim's word, their word. So now, let's move on. And um, so Jesus answers these cats. And I just want to say, this level of warfare that we're dealing with now, you're going to have to do more than praise. You're going to have to do more than pray. You're going to have to do more than uh, reading the word and quoting the word. You might have to add some fasting. I'm, I'm going to take away the mic. You and I, we're going to have to add some fasting to this level of warfare. If we're going to get through it peacefully, if we're going to get through it successfully, and then we have sustainable success. And that's the key. So now, all right, let's go to the next verse, verse 36. Now, watch this here. Now, you got to pay attention when Jesus throws a parable in the midst of his teaching. The parables are, are, are vitally important. And whenever we read through the Bible, especially in the, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the minute Jesus drops a parable, he's doing a couple of things. Number one, he's speaking 
and he's using natural situations to explain or display spiritual or heavenly truth, right? Then he's also using parables because, okay, sometimes people don't get the parables. Sometimes the parables are like, huh? And, and so people that really don't want truth, they just gonna go away and start complaining and they gonna start talking about, did you hear that? That was a dumb thing. He's like, I don't even understand. I wish it would make some sense. Jesus will do that and he's not gonna come in there and try to explain himself. Then Jesus uses parables because if you really want the truth, you'll ask questions. Like when Jesus would talk, teach in parables, some of, some of his parables was plain as day. Some of his parables were really difficult to understand. And the ones that wanted to understand it, they had to do one thing. They had to go to Jesus, like the disciples. The disciples went to Jesus, and they had to ask him, what did you mean by that parable? Some of the parables they knew. You know that parable. You know you offended the Pharisees and the scribes. Jesus didn't back down. Jesus is your protector. Jesus is your, your preserver. Jesus is your prosperer. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your, my goodness, he, he, he's your everything. He's your deliverer. But you got to get to know how he does it. You got to understand why he does it. And then you got to be able to recognize when he's done it. And see, that builds a relationship and a trust factor from us, from you to God, that is absolutely unbreakable. There's not a thing that Satan can do to break your love and your trust in God when you really understand what Jesus is doing for the Father, what the Holy Spirit is doing for the Father and Jesus, and what the Holy Spirit is doing for you. So as you keep on hearing the word, you keep on reading the word, you keep on praising, and in and, 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 and the natural, in this physical experiential world that we're living in, if you don't see the hand of God moving yet, Keep on praising, keep on praying, keep on fasting, keep on seeking, keep on asking God, God, what does this mean? And God says, when you do that, like with parables, God says, I will open your understanding. I, I came to this this morning. I was praying this morning, getting ready for the day, and, I, I, and it hit me. It is impossible to understand God unless God reveals to you the information you need. It goes, it goes kin to Jesus saying, nobody can come to the Father except the Father draws him. Now, the good news is the Father is drawing everybody, but everybody might not be listening. All right, the truth is some folk just ain't listening. But not us. We're listening. God's got our attention. So now that God has our attention, God says that we can come boldly to God and ask for understanding, ask for help, ask for resources, ask for strategies, whatever we need to glorify God, to be successful and glorify God through our success. That's a, re that's a recipe for victory. All right. I go off on these little tangents every now and then, and you know what I mean? Y'all just work with me. Let me tell you something. This passage, all right, dealing with parables, all right, a parable, okay, uh, okay, when he's talking parables, got to pay attention. Because there's a point. So now, the next couple of parables that we're going to deal with, okay, I've preached this time and time again, and I've had just a basic traditional understanding of it. Today, all right, I want y'all to be the judge, because the Holy Ghost was talking to me this morning. He was talking to me this morning. I was like, whoa. And I was doing the study, and I was breaking down these words and breaking down the Greek and the Hebrew. All right, let's do this. Y'all ready? All right, here we go. Oh, hey, to any fathers that's tuned in, happy Father's Day. God bless you. Hey, best way to be a father is imitate the Father God. Imitate the Father God. In order to do that, you got to look at Jesus. Imitate Jesus' life. He's representing what it means to be the perfect Father. In principle, in display, in life. If you really need to get that so that you can perform that, then you and the Holy Spirit got to get tight down to the knuckle. You're going to need the Holy Spirit's power to be able to do the things that the carnal flesh is like, I ain't doing that. I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna never do that. That's too hard. You're gonna need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to make those kind of changes to be like the Father God, to be like the Lord Jesus. You're gonna need the Holy Spirit to be like the Holy Spirit. He has to teach us how to do it. All right, fathers, amen.
All right. All right. And that's not just for fathers. That's for everybody. We, you know, we're going to do this. So, all right. Verse 36. Let's look at this here. Strap in. Dig in. Get focused. Hey, if you got a notepad, pull it out. Get your pen. Get ready. All right. Look at this here. And he spoke also a parable unto him. I mean, unto them. No man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. Now, now, you got to ask, why, why did Jesus say this then? What was he dealing with to make this parable, this teaching, come out of him at the Pharisees, at his disciples? And you got to look at the beginning of Luke chapter 5 to really understand the context. And the, and the main, the, in, a, in a nutshell, them Pharisees, they are, they, every time Jesus opened his mouth, they was trying to figure out how they could make him look bad, how they can trip him up, how they could discredit him, how they can say he's a false prophet, he's fake, you know what I mean? And, and, and they did everything. So every word that he said, they're sitting there looking. They're not looking to receive the benefit, the help, the healing. They looking to criticize. They scrutinize. And they, they trying to tear apart everything that he's saying to try to make him look like he ain't who he is. Folk gonna come into your life and they're gonna try to make you look like who you ain't. They're gonna try to make you feel less than what God has made you. They're gonna try to tell you you can't do what God is calling you to do. Here you done prayed, you've been praying and praising and fasting. God done spoke to you, and you're gonna get around some Hamans, you're gonna get around some, some negative folks, some Pharisees, some scribes who are gonna literally try to discourage you from doing what God has called you to do, from being who God has called you to be. And they are being used by the devil. And you got to recognize that. And you got to be firm and strong and unmovable, unshakable. You got to always be moving forward in your relationship with Almighty God. That's not going to happen until you start spending more time with God in prayer, more time with God in his word, more time with God. Hello, somebody. More time with God doing his word, you know, doing something for God. All right. Enough of that. Now, dealing with difficult people. How many of you guys want to know through this verse right here, the formula for dealing with some difficult people, for dealing with some people, you know they ain't for you. You know they don't like you. You know what I mean? They may not like you because you look too much like Jesus in character and behavior. You sound too much like Jesus. You know what I mean? You speak in truth to every situation. Some folk don't want truth. Some folk just want you to just agree with them and you know they're full of malarkey. I can't say what the other, I can't say the other. Malarkey is like they're full of mess. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? And then, you know what I mean? You know what mess is. Okay. All right. I ain't going to go there. I'm going to leave that. <laughs> mess, misery and craziness side by side, but I'm going to leave that one right there. Dealing with difficult people. There's three things, all right? Three things. I pray that this will work for you. It worked for Jesus. Now, 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 you have to understand something, all right? People say, might say, well, Jesus died on the cross. That was the purpose, man. That Jesus, Jesus came here to die, to pay the price for our sins so that we could have a relationship again. He came to bridge the gap, and he came to be the bridge. You know what I mean? When you bridging the gap, you know what I mean? You literally bringing people from one scenario to a better scenario. When you the bridge, folk going to walk over you to get to the other side. You have to take that at the beginning because they don't understand. They don't understand the purpose of a bridge. They don't understand the purpose of bridging a gap. So when we start explaining that to people, we start explaining what God is doing. We start explaining why we there. Man, people get an understanding and that thing get a little bit better. So now, three things dealing with difficult people or dealing with folks that really are not totally cognizant of the truth. Number one, and if you got to deal with people and if, and if what they're doing affects you, okay, or if what they're doing affects them and it may put them in harm's way, you as a Christian, you know what I mean? You got to ask God, God, show me this form to help me to put this in words that I don't make an enemy talking to some of these difficult people. So number one, we look at this here, okay, and no man put a piece of garment upon an old. Hey. Point number one, dealing with difficult people, dealing with people that's doing it the wrong way. Hey, you got to say this to them in your own words. Hey, uh, excuse me. The way you're doing this is not good. Um, it's not the best way. 
Because, you know, when folks doing their own thing, they don't want nobody telling them nothing. But if you, if you know that the way they doing it, it's not the best way, you, you got to tell them. If you love them, if you really care about them, you got to tell them. Look at this here. He says, no man put up a piece of garment, a new garment, on an old. In other words, whoever's doing this, they ain't doing it right. Now, God's speaking to him by parable. What he was trying to say to the Pharisees is, you've been doing a lot of stuff, but you ain't been doing it right. You think you're doing it right, but you're not doing it right. You started with the Ten Commandments, but then you added 629 that don't even have nothing to do with the Ten Commandments. Don't have nothing to do with God. This is all what this is your concoction. Jesus, and, and they knew what Jesus was doing. All right. So number one, if you're gonna help them, you gotta let them know, hey, uh, um, excuse me, sir, ma'am. Um, uh, the way you're doing this is it's not good. It's it's not it's not the best way. Now, you don't know what you're going to get out of them. So you got to make clear. You got to make clear. You got to jump to the, to the point number two. If you're going to help difficult people go in the wrong direction, you got to look at them and say, hey, look, this is why I'm giving you. This is why I'm talking to you. I'm saying this here. What I'm saying, these are the facts. All right, this has been researched. Okay, this has been proven. But you trying to put a new patch on an old garment? That's not going to work. Nobody does it like that no more. Nobody does that. The way you're doing that is it's not, it's not the best way. It's, this is not good. Nothing good is going to come out of this. Eventually, this thing is going to divide and separate. This thing is going to crumble. It's going to come to ruin. All right? Let me tell you how this, is, this should be done. And let me tell you why your way is not the best way. Now, now, now then you go right into point number three. Point number three, you got to look at people and say, especially if they look at you funny when you're trying to help them, you got to look at them and say, look, I know you desire success. I, I know you want to prosper in this, this thing. I know, I know, I know you, wanna, you want peace. You want victory, okay? And, and you want permanence. You want this thing to be sustainable. You, you want to do something that you ain't wasting your time. So now, you know what I mean? I, 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 I want the same for you. You want to be successful. I want you successful. You know why we ought to want our brothers and sisters successful? Because unsuccessful people can get very, very, they can get negative quick. And, and they might turn on you if they listen to the devil hard enough and long enough. So we want them successful so they can feel like, yes, bah. so now they don't want your stuff. You don't want their stuff. They're not envious of you. You're not envious of them. Success is important. You're not jealous of them. They're not jealous of you. You know what I mean? You, you know, when you say, hey, I want to be who God made me to be. I'm glad God made me the way I am. You know, we're in a very, very tense time in, in, in America and even around the world. And then with this, uh, you know, this racial thing, you know what I mean? Hey, you know what I mean? I, I'm glad God made me black. If I was white, I'd say, I'm glad God made me white. If I was Latino, I'm glad God made me Latino. If I was Asian, I'm glad God made me Asian. If, you know what I mean? If, if I was African, whatever, whatever I am getting here, I didn't get here because of my own choosing. Man, this is what we got to say to racists. Hey, we all family. But people don't want to believe the Bible. God destroyed everything except eight people. Noah, Noah's wife, they three sons, and they three wives. They all got in the boat. They all got out the boat. Everything else was killed. Every other human on the planet killed, dead, done. God did it. He's starting all over. That wasn't a parable. That's real true fact. That's not a fable, a fairy tale. That's true. God started over. Everything that came out of that boat was one family. They offspring, all kinfolk. The only one that tried to bring distinction and separation from a standpoint of I'm better than you, I'm smarter than you, that's Satan's work. God says, I created all of y'all in my likeness, in my image. I created all of y'all to succeed. 
I put in all of y'all the ability to succeed. I put in all of y'all the ability to come to me, God talking, not Eddie Haynes, God talking, to come to me and get help to be successful in whatever you're doing for my glory. It's just that simple. It's Satan that comes in and says, oh, oh, we black, we better than you. Oh, we white, we better than you. Oh, we Asian, we better than you. Oh, we Latino, we better than you. No, that's, that's of the devil. That's satanic. That is demonic. And nobody's checked Satan on it, and nobody's checked people that's aligned with Satan. And we got to now not only enact laws to bring about justice and equality, but we got to go to the spirit realm and show people how demonic, how satanic, how much that type of expression manifests the heart of Satan. And you got to make sure you let them know, look, I am not, listen, look, you want success, you want peace, here are the facts. You can choose to do with this information what you want to, but this is the truth. So can't we just all act like family? You know, family under the inspiration and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit in your situation, without the Holy Spirit in your relationship, without the Holy Spirit in your endeavors, Satan is always trying to jack that thing. He's always trying to rip it and cause it to, 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 to be destroyed. He's always trying to ruin it. But if you want to guard against Satan stealing, killing, and destruction, you've got to insulate yourself with the life, the ways, and the very truth of God. And you know, truth in any situation stands and outstands a lie, outstands falsehood and deception. You come in the truth, boom, it's done. You prove it, you prove truth, it's a wrap. Unless you're dealing with some really messed up, satanic individual, just crazy. I'm talking when you put the facts on it. So let's go through this. You're dealing with difficult situations, difficult people. Number one, you got to look at what they're doing and how it's being done. And, and like they said, nobody puts a new piece of garment on an old. That's the, this ain't going to work. This, this is not the best way to do this. this you do, what you're doing is not good. Then you got to come back with the truth. Okay, hell, this is, this is the actual facts of how this thing is supposed to be done. And this is why it's supposed to be done like that. You know, you, 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 you can't mix the old with the new. You, it's, it, it won't work. The end result is going to be disastrous. Then, the, then you got to look, you got to let people know, hey, I get it. You want to succeed, right? You do want to be victorious, right? You do want peace to be the outcome of your experience, right? Okay, I, I'm in agreement with you. I want the same thing for you. I'm not the enemy by telling you that there's a better way. I'm not the enemy by telling you that Jesus is the better way. I'm not the enemy by telling you that the way you've been doing it might not be the best way. Look at your results. Look at your outcomes. Your way, Satan's way, God's way. Do the analysis. Now, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about what you got to start talking to people around you if you're going to have peace, all right? And then, and then you're just going to have to, you have to let folks know, you know what I mean? Not only I want the same thing for you, but you, this is important now. Don't miss this on point number three, okay? You got to look at them and say, hey, look, you're going to make your own decisions. All I want you to just give it some thought. Give, give the truth that I've spoken to you. Just give it some thought. Okay, and then what you choose, you choose. Because remember, if their choices don't affect you and affect your life or affect the global community of humanity, all right, let them do them. But if, if their choices affect you, you have to have a conversation with them. Jesus having a conversation with these Pharisees and his disciples because these Pharisees is trying to impose satanic rhetoric on them, and that's going to affect what God's got planned for the disciples in the future. you got to be careful about the people you're hanging around with and the things that they're speaking into your mind and the beliefs that they have. If they're not in, 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 in harmony with Jesus, they're going to affect how you think and how you process and how you act. So we just got to, I don't know, for me, I'm like, I'm really going through my whole experience with the fine-tooth comb of the Word of God, and I'm saying, God, Help me to get my do right. 
done right. Did you get it? The comb of the word, do right, done right. I right, don't worry about it. We can move on. Okay, so now, note in this verse the, the few things that are powerful, and this is what the Holy Spirit kind of pointed out to me, that, that, you know, dealing with difficult people, but then also understanding that if you don't have agreement, oh, life's going to be tough. It, it, it's going to be tough. And agreement, you know what I mean? When we start talking about agreement, and let me just share this with you. Agreement has to be in any endeavor. And agreement is in any endeavor. If it's going to move forward with, with smoothness, it's going to move forward with efficiency, if it's going to move forward and, and bring the outcome that you're desiring. Now, here's the unfortunate thing with agreement. It all depends on the object of your agreement. So if you're in agreement with Satan, y'all gonna get things done for Satan. I'm not talking about you, you know I'm not talking about you. All right, let me rephrase that. If folks is in agreement with Satan, they gonna get some stuff done for Satan. It ain't gonna be permanent. It ain't gonna be eternal. Cause their outcome is totally different from we who are in agreement with God. Our outcome is gonna be totally different. And we all gonna battle in the middle. We all going to deal with some ruckus in the middle, but it's the outcome and it's how we go through it. So now when we start talking about agreement with God, you know, agreement is a powerful thing. You start talking about harmonizing the power of unity. You know what I mean? It all depends on the object. What are you in agreement with? And you got to understand, some folk want you to get in agreement with some craziness. And when they come with some craziness, you got to stand with truth. Truth is the only thing that's going to stop people from getting worse if they agreeing with foolishness. And truth is the only thing that will help people move forward and get better if the agreement is with truth. So now the word agreement, watch this here. Jesus says, if, if, if the old and the new can't agree, it's gonna rip the clothes. You're gonna have a division, you're gonna have chaos, you're gonna have ruin. We're not doing that as Christians, we not having chaos, we not having ruin, we not having division, we are unified in Jesus Christ. We're unified through the word of God, which is the formula of God, the process of God, and we are getting better. Let me tell you something, you are getting better. Good God Almighty, I feel a praise coming on. You getting better, I'm gonna tell you why. You're praying more, <laughs> you're, you're reading the Bible more, you're listening to the word of God more. You're thinking more before you act. And, and, and even now, you start to say, okay, God, I need you to be sovereign, and I need you to work this thing out for our good. Now, now I'm not talking about you and your, your family, your kinfolk, your, your mate. No, no, I'm, not. I'm talking about you and God in agreement. When I say, okay, God, I need you to work this out for our good, I'm talking about you saying to God, God, me and you, in agreement, we unify. Oh, saint, child of God, sir, ma'am, you get an agreement with God, you can't lose. You may go through some battles. It might be elongated because the devil just ain't going to roll over and just let you just win. He's going to do everything he can to stop you because you too influence you. Wait a minute, that came out wrong. You too influential. That's the one we want. You too influential. You people look up to you. People watching you. They admire you. When you come out saying, it's just not me. It ain't because of my do that's been combed through with the fine tooth comb of the word. <laughs> now I, that was childish. Okay? I, I had to throw it in there though. Right? But you looking at them saying, no, I have somebody that I'm in agreement with working behind the scenes making sure that everything in my life turns out the way they said. <clears throat> and it's happening. Because you and God, God, all things are working out for our good. For God's good, your good. That's agreement. You and God are in agreement. Now, when you and God are in agreement, you have all the resources of God. You got to keep the faith. You got to keep that faith growing, getting stronger to where it reaches great and stays there. Then everything that you trust God to do, every promise you find, 
You, you are not ready for the process. You done added fasting to your warfare. You're doing all the things that need to be done. It's impossible for you to stay the same. It's impossible for your situation not to get better when Almighty God has been invited by you to get an agreement. Yeah, uh, it's powerful. It's powerful. You, yeah, you got to have patience. Let God work. And then you keep working for God. All right, so let's move on. Agreeing is the Greek word, symphonio. Symphonio is the word where we get symphony from. Okay? So, so it means to be harmonious. It means to accord. It means to be suitable. It means to concur. And then lastly, it means to stipulate by compact. Now, all of this stuff means a lot. So when we get an agreement with God, when God came to you, came to me, we didn't choose God. God chose us. He said, when you was dead in your sins and trespasses, that means when you was living in sin, you was designated as a transgressor of God's law. God says, when you was in your mess, God says, I came and called you out. What is mess? Misery and evil side by side. When you and I, when I was in my mess, God came down and said, look, you want to change? You want a different outcome? Because the way you're going right now, you're going to get a lot of marring, a lot of scratch, a lot of bumps and bruises. Now, you can avoid all of that if you do it my way. You're going to be attacked because the devil ain't going to be happy with it, but I will get you through and I'll bring you through. That's what God is saying to all of humanity, right? So God says, but you got to get an agreement with me. Now, Jesus is using this parable and he's using clothing and he's using the end result that would happen with clothing if you got two different things come together and they're not in agreement. Man, you got to have agreement. So in other words, you got to be in harmony with God. And if you got people in your life, you want to be in harmony with them. They got to be in harmony with you. Y'all got to have the same goal. Now, how we get to it, we'll work all of that out, but we got to have the same goal. Glorifying God is the greatest way to harmonize, the greatest way to unite, the greatest way to get into agreement. So as I said, that word harmonious means showing agreement in action. Right? You're going to have to teach how to do that. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go left, then right. That's got to be practiced until it becomes nature, right? That, that word harmonious also means combining so as to produce a pleasing result. Can you see that process, formula, outcome, end result? When you're in agreement, and God's whole teaching is, when he's talking to these Pharisees, he said, you guys, it's not that you, you know, are not in agreement because you don't have the ability to be in agreement. You're not in agreement because you don't want to be. And right now, difficult, difficult people, you can still reach them. But if they choose that they just they don't I'm not, I'm not getting an agreement with you they just not there's some signs let's move on look at this here this word harmonious which is the first definition of agreement means not experiencing disagreement or fighting you can tell when people ain't in agreement with you they always fight you always fight you can tell when you're not in agreement with somebody else you always fight but the thing is whatever you're fighting whatever they're fighting is it based in truth is it based in the things of God? It, can, you, can you bring it back to God and Jesus look at it and say, I can agree with this, or Jesus look at it and say, I can't agree with it. And if God can't agree with it, we ought to abandon some things that God can't agree with. Okay. Number two, second definition of the word agreement. Jesus said you can't put a new piece of cloth and an old piece of cloth together and stitch them together. I don't care how much you stitch them. When pressure hit that thing, when life hits that thing, something's going to give. Something's going to give. And it ain't going to be the new. It's going to be that old. The old, been there too long. It needs to be changed. All right. Accord. The word accord means an official agreement or treaty. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. All right. If you get into something where the outcome can have great blessing or the outcome can have great destruction. Whoever you get in agreement with, you need to get out that piece of paper and write down, this is the treaty. This is the official agreement. Or in other words, this is the contract. See, Jesus' life is the written, living 
contract between humanity and God. And our agreement with Jesus Christ makes our relationship with God official. And it's a treaty signed in the blood of Jesus. And it is enacted upon by our agreement with God's plan, bringing peace. We are now at peace with God. Woo! Hallelujah. But what causes this peace? I shared this with our ministers on our ministers call this morning, preparing for service. What brings us peace is not anything that we've done except accepting Jesus. What brings us peace is God coming to us being merciful. God coming to us being understanding and loving. God coming to us and manifesting grace and favor to our lives. That's what God did. So, so now when we start talking about we have an official contract with God, we literally have an agreement, a treaty with God. That means that everything that God has promised us as children of God, Christians, Christ-like ones, doing our best to be more Christ-like. I said this to a person uh, earlier this week. I said, look, you know what I mean? We need to pray more. I said, we got, we got to pray more. I said, I ain't perfect, but I'm praying more. That ought to be our mantra. We ain't perfect as Christians, but we praying more. I ain't perfect, but I'm praising more. I ain't perfect, but I'm reading the Bible more. I ain't perfect, but I'm talking to people about God more. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying my best, doing my best to do more for God. That creates peace. And it also promotes growth. Oh, spiritual growth. All right, look at this here. All right, number three, when we talk about agreement, when Jesus is talking about agreement, our agreement with God, he says to be suitable. Or in other words, adapted to a use or a purpose. You know, all the change for the good, all these spiritual things that we've been doing in our lives is making us suitable for God, suitable for ourselves, suitable for others. So wait a minute, what do you mean suitable for yourself? Do you know how many people that don't like themselves? Satan has done so much to try to ruin their perception, ruin their, 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 who, they, who they are. He's, he's sent people into their lives, circumstances into their lives. He's gotten them to do things that when they look at themselves in the mirror, they do not like themselves. They, they are not, oh my God, they, they, they don't like themselves. But Jesus Christ says, I've forgiven everything. I have healed everything that Satan has done in your life to steal, kill, and destroy, and destroy and mar your perception of yourself. God says, don't see, don't focus on what you used to be. Focus on who you are in agreement with God the Father, with God the Son, with God the Holy Spirit, and let the new birth, let being born again, dominate your future, motivate your now, and get you moving through the process. You are getting better, doggone it. You are getting stronger, you're getting wiser, you're getting closer, let it happen. Don't be afraid of getting closer to God. Don't be afraid, no, don't, I don't wanna be like them. Don't be like Jesus. I don't wanna act like them, don't act like Jesus. But you gotta read your Bible. You got to study the word so you can know how Jesus acts. That's what we're doing, this whole loop deal and going verse by verse. All right. I, okay, I got like about seven more minutes. Don't go nowhere. Hold tight. Okay, so look at this here. When we start talking about agreement with God, we're talking about being able to concur with God. So you got to see yourself the way God sees you. You got to think like God thinks about you. You got to talk about you like God talks about you. You're being, you've been made suitable. When you, when you, when you are suitable, you're, just, you're not only suitable to God, you're suitable to yourself, and then you're going to be suitable and in harmony with other people. But you got to be suitable to yourself because you cannot effectively harmonize permanently and be at peace with it until you are suitable with yourself. When you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, you know what, God been working on this stuff. God been working on this girl, and God is doing a good job. I'm the Lord. I ain't done. I ain't done. God, whoo, I sure not like what I used to be. Y'all don't want to meet the old me. The old me was not suitable for God, in harmony with God, but the new me is. Whoo, glory to God, man. Does that create hope? Don't that create joy? 
Can't you now look? I can't wait to see what next year is going to be. I can't wait to see what tomorrow is going to be. Oh my God, hallelujah. Why? Because you're in agreement, you're in contact with God. So now the word uh, number four, concur, the word concur means we see it the same way. It's going to require some change. It's going to require us to say, okay, God, first of all, show us your way. Show us how you do it. Then when God does that, then you go, oh, oh, God, I see it your way. Yes, we're in agreement. When you're working with others, y'all got to have not only a plan, but y'all got to have an outcome. What is, what is the outcome? Then you got to have a plan. How are we going to do this? And then we got we to gotta know, how long, how long is this projected to take? When you can get an agreement, now y'all work is going to be different. Y'all work is going to be fun. Y'all work is going to your, your be hilariously joyful because you know you're moving toward the end result, the physical manifestation of the process but you got to do that with god you can't do that without god without god shucks man it, it might be hatfield and the mccoys it, 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 it might be bloods and crips up in that thing y'all just fighting each other you, you know what i mean it might be the 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 the, the irish and the, and the the south south and the north irish you know what i mean it's just gonna be conflict it'll be north korea and south korea and that thing no we don't want that jesus brings peace jesus brings permanence Jesus brings success. Jesus brings sustainability. And you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. I need to go back to those three points, right? Okay. No, y'all are not difficult people. You know it's the truth. You know God's been working in your situation. You know God's been answering your prayer. You may not have had all of them answered, but guess what? You got more answered than you have. All right, let's move on. Last one. When we start talking about agreement, watch, this is powerful. So we had to harmony, to, to be in harmony. We had to be in accord, to be on one accord. We had to be suitable. We had to concur. We see things the same. We're learning to see things the same way God does. But you got to understand something. All right, before I give you this last one, you got to understand something. All your life, Satan's been throwing propaganda, lies, deception. He's been throwing all kind of stealing, killing, and destruction. Blaming God, lying on God to skew your thinking, to get you so that, that you're not concurring with God, so that you're not in agreement with God. And what we need, I say we, I'm in the same boat, we need somebody, Holy Ghost, to open our understanding and show us the truth we've been missing. Because, you know, you look at one thing, you hear a thing, you look at one thing, and sometimes guess what happens? You formulate an opinion. But when we look at what God says and we got to hear it over and over, then we can change our opinion. And that's what's happening. Not only is your opinion changing, my opinion changing, but our lives are changing and lining up with the opinions of God. And that spells eternal victory. And then the last one, stipulate by compact. It's a formal agreement or a contract between two or more parties. This is legally binding. What we got with God what God is doing is legally binding. It's not just something that's, you know what I mean, it's just kind of like out the air, off the cuff. No, God says, I swear by blood, I'm going to do this for you. This is done, okay? And God says, look, okay, the, the, the way you're doing some things might need some change. So Jesus is giving these guys a parable. Look at the next verse, and I'm going to end with this verse. We won't break it down, and we'll go ahead and get ready to close out prayer. But look at this here. No man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. You gotta understand something. Jesus gave this parable. He said, look, number one, God, number, number one, I don't want you to perish. I don't want what you're doing in life to end up in ruin, to end up destroyed. I don't want, I don't want you to be killed. There's a way to do things that'll prevent some things, then there's a way to do things to help foster some stealing, killing, and destruction. And then there's a way to do some things that everybody comes out blessed. Now, that's what God wants for us, you know? And in that first parable, Jesus goes on, he says, you, you know, you can't put a new piece of garment on an old piece of clothes. They won't get an agreement. First of all, it's an eyesore. The, the, no, you, you, you got, you, there's got to be some change. There's going to be some change of the way we do things and we're going to change the formula. We got to get the right formula with the right formula. 
so we can have the right outcome. Jesus says, look, th that thing is going to be torn. God doesn't want your situation torn. He doesn't want you torn. He wants you solid. Now he comes in there. He breaks all that down. Then he comes out of, and he hits him with another parable. He says, look, I don't want you to perish. I don't want you to be torn. The way to refuse and to avoid being torn, you got to get in agreement with the right process, the right formula. In life, if we let the devil keep running things in our government, running things at our jobs, running things in our families, running things in us, he's going to tear us to pieces. And Jesus said, I came so that you could be whole, so that you could be unified, so you could have the same power that I operate in. That's the message of God. God's reasoning with us, working with us, trying to get us in agreement. And I thank God that you've gotten in agreement with God. I thank God that you begin to seek and pursue God. I'm doing the same thing. We definitely need it in this day and age, right? And so God makes us some powerful promises. Number one, he says, if we do it his way, our garments will be brand new and they won't tear easy. Then when we get to this next one, we'll probably deal with this here the next time we come together. You know what I mean? No man put a new wine into old wine bottles. We need to understand why that is so. We need to understand what God means by perishing, what Satan means by perishing, how to avoid it. And I'm telling you right now, in the midst of this situation, make this decision. With God, with God's policies, with God's formula, understanding whatever process that you're in, you are not ordained to perish. You are not ordained to be divided and ripped and torn. No, that's not our lives as Christians. That's not our lives as children of God. So what we got to do to avoid those things, we got to learn God's ways. That's what Luke, verse by verse, is designed to do. Show us the ways of God. I pray you put these principles into action. Listen, put them things into action so that, watch this here, so that God can show themselves true to you. Watch this here. Have you tried the new? Have you tried God's way? <laughs> Have you given Jesus as much time as you've given other things? I'm asking myself these questions too, and I'm coming up with some, some, some answers. And I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with some things, you know what I mean? And, and God is like, I'm here to make sure that you don't perish. So watch this here. God is doing this toward us. We ought to do it toward ourselves, toward each other. Make sure that we don't perish. Make sure that those that are around us don't perish. We got to be able to speak this word in truth and let people know, I'm not here as your enemy. I'm here to try to help you with the word of God. Come on, let us close this out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you that these words will find a place to grow. That these words, your words, will find a place to be fruitful and flourish. That your words will find a place to bring resurrection life, resurrection power. Lord God, we thank you. Only you can do this. And we magnify you right now because you are our God. You have given us a contract. You have sealed it in blood, Jesus' blood. And Lord, we believe and we trust you right now. And we magnify you for even now, Lord God, stirring us to overcome everything that Satan has thrown against us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for zooming in. Hey, tell a friend. Share this message. If it blessed you, it'll bless them. And I just want to let you know that we love you. We're praying for you. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes of Resurrection Life Christian Center Church here in Hartford, Connecticut. God bless you as you get stronger in the word. God bless you. Be sure to check out our table talk. Um, there's uh, YouTube, YouTube, uh, Apostle Edward B. Haynes, and you'll see a whole lineup of just some powerful, encouraging teachings that will give you not only formula but it will break down process and then it will show you the outcome. When we know the outcome, when we know the goals, glory to God, hallelujah, all we got to do is start seeing any amount of success that should motivate you to move faster through the process and stay consistent with the formulas of God. We love you. God bless you. Until next time, Apostle Haynes, I'm done for the day. Bless you.